Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute. If you're looking for more tips or lessons with, from Emily, please check out Musigy.com for all the sheet music, transcriptions, albums, books, and flute lesson packages. That's Musigy.com, M-U-S-O-G-Y.com. Also, if you're looking for posters, fingering charts, or merch, you can head over at our merch store at store.thefluechannel.com for all your flute needs. If you want to help us on a monthly basis, you can also consider joining us over at Patreon for as little as $2 a month. This helps us make more, more great content for you. Check the description for more info. Now on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Emily. How's it going, Emily? Good. How are you? Good. Hopefully everybody's doing great. We were on a little bit of a hiatus for the podcast, but uh, we're back and uh, we're going to be doing uh, regular episodes, hopefully every other month again, and uh, new stuff in store as well. And we've done a lot of things. A lot of things have happened in the past five, six months. We passed 150,000 subscribers, which is pretty amazing. Yay! Now we're at like <laughs> 153. And it's all because of you guys that were doing this, and this is uh, amazing efforts, and we love every one of you. You guys are so great. And yeah, we're going to do uh, a little bit different format this uh, this episode. We're going to do a little interview with um, Wendy Rolf. It's a pre-recorded interview that we're going to put right at the beginning, right after this. And then we're going to answer your questions. So during the interview, if you have any questions about flute playing or flute practicing or all the general stuff... Um, about flute and music, just let us know, and we'll try to line up all those questions after. But, uh, Emily, uh, how did this all come about, uh, the interview with Wendy and also... Uh, yeah. yeah, so um, in uh, March, last March, uh, we were invited by the Berkeley Flute Society. So the students at Berkeley have a club, basically, and they, in they invited me to give a little master class. Uh, and then... I also played with their flute choir at Harvard the next day. It was amazing. We had so much fun. They were nice and good and yeah, it was great. And uh, in that occasion, Wendy Rolf, who's the flute professor at Berkeley, I think there's there are three, but she's like she's been there for a long time. She's a uh, tenure professor there. And she um yeah, so she um we met and we talked and she talked about that project that she's a part of and with a lot of uh, passion uh, in Ecuador. And we thought it was interesting. She also um, sometimes brings flutes, of course, all of that very legally and as gifts to people because it's difficult to get flutes there. And she's uh, really into uh, helping the people there as much as she can because she believes in what they're doing. And we thought it was beautiful. And so... Uh, we uh, we did that interview with her. Yeah, so we're going to play that now. And then um, for those who are uh, uh, listening to this on the podcast forum, if you want to go to the YouTube channel and uh, check out the full video and see the video and everything, be sure to do that after this is done recording. And uh, the recording itself is around 12 to 13 minute interview. So uh, yeah, watch that. And also, um, if you want to watch more of those uh, of that interview, we have an extended interview over on patreon.com slash the flute channel, along with two other interviews that Wendy did in uh, Ecuador with the um, some of the uh, musicians and uh, organizers of uh, the festivals there. So it's very interesting, and I would encourage you all to go to uh, patreon.com slash the flute channel and see it there. It's free for uh, everyone uh, to watch those interviews, but if you want to have a more uh, commercial-free experience about our channel in, in whole, that's where you got to go. Uh, if you pay uh, $5 a month, you get our whole entire archive there on video format and uh, other stuff as well for uh, $5 a month. And it helps support us directly and makes us uh, have even more um, content for you. So yeah, on with uh, the interview with Wendy Rolf, professor at Berkeley College of Music. Hello, Wendy Rolf. Uh, Nice to have you on the Flute Talk podcast. Thank you for having me, Emily. It's wonderful to see you again. I, we had a wonderful visit when you came to Berkeley College of Music, sponsored by the Berkeley Flute Society last, uh, last spring, you and Nicola. So it's wonderful to see you again. I, and we were happy to welcome you at Berkeley. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself as a flutist. I 
um, very busy playing lots of flutes from many uh, eras of flute playing from the Baroque, a little bit of Renaissance, up through the uh, classical and romantic on old flutes and copies of old flutes and piccolos. In fact, I just performed with Boston Baroque last weekend. We performed Boston, uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and I was playing eight key flute and five key piccolo, which is exciting. And also I perform a lot of contemporary music. I specialized in that in my graduate work. My studies have been with various fantastic flutists. I'm very fortunate uh, at Oberlin Conservatory with the renowned late Robert Willoughby, at Manhattan School of Music with Harvey Solberger, one of the pioneers in contemporary flute techniques and contemporary flute music, and also with uh, Lois Schaefer, who was the piccolo soloist with the Boston Symphony for many years, with Marcel Moise, attending classes with Monsieur Jean-Pierre Rompal, and some Baroque flute lessons, although Many of us who were starting out in the early instrument revival in the U.S. learned as we were going. And I was very, very fortunate to study with someone named Janice Smith when I was in junior high school. Uh, she ended up playing with the St. Louis Symphony for over 35 years. She was a wonderful pedagogue. Wow, that's a... Uh... That's amazing. You do so many things, and uh, yeah, and it was amazing also to meet you in in the spring. I loved it, and I loved your students as well. Everyone was uh, great. So um, uh, you you go in Ecuador, and you have a program there um, that I'd like you to talk a bit more about. I was fortunate to be invited to the International Flute Festival in Quito, Ecuador, in two thousand five by Maestro Luciano Carrera, who founded the festival about 30 years ago. My dear friend, the great Brazilian pianist, Maria Jose Carasqueira, has been going to that festival for a long time, and she spoke with Maestro Luciano about me. So we, uh, I met many wonderful flutists there from Ecuador and from Europe and the United States and uh, we're Latin America, of course. Um, and at that first festival, uh, so that's the International Flute Festival in Quito, which is still going. Uh, it's right by the um, equator. So it's the festival in the center of the world. <laughs> and at that first flute festival I, in Quito, I was very, again, again fortunate to meet uh, Leonardo Leon, who is the principal flutist of the Guayaquil or Orchestra Sinfonica de Guayaquil, and Minerva Quintana, who's a piccolo soloist and second flutist of that orchestra. And nine years ago, uh, Leonardo Leon and Minerva founded the festival Perla del Pacifico. That's the nickname of the uh, city of Guayaquil, which is in the south. It's on the, uh, on the coast and it's where uh, there's a lot of commerce because of the, the large river that runs from Guayaquil up into Ecuador. So Leonardo and Minerva and their friend Belen and Lady Lore founded this festival back, uh, what would it be, in 2014. Uh, so we are, we teach students of all ages. Some at, at the festival two weeks ago, at the beginning of October, we had teachers who came and brought their students. Some people drove eight hours over the mountains or took buses for eight or 10 hours to get to the festival. And we, we give classes, uh, we give concerts, we give workshops, and then the students and the faculty play together in the Chorale de Flautas, the flute, the uh, flute choir. We, this year we played all music from Ecuador, which was great, arranged for flute choir or, or written for flute choir. Uh, so my involvement is to help to support my colleagues in those countries. But it's a big challenge for many of them because the economies of many Latin American countries were affected by the oil prices going down. And then also the recessions we've had and also greatly affected by COVID. So we really admire our colleagues there who really have to raise funds to put together the festivals, to pay the expenses. Uh, 
bring in the students and we admire the students and their teachers who come to the festivals. So Efforts, yeah. uh, it's really human rights work through music. Uh, and we, we who go to the festivals are happy to volunteer our time to support this great work that they're doing. Uh, and again, it's wonderful to see I met a young a boy who was 12 when I met him in March when I was there. Um, Mateo, who's from Loja in the very south of Ecuador, was part of Peru at one time. And he played very well. His teacher, um, Monica, uh, was there also. She brought him to Cuenca. Actually, I was in Cuenca, a little further north. But Mateo came five hours over the mountains to go to a class I gave, and then he just won the junior division of the uh, flute festival, the flute competition that uh, at, at the Festival Perla del Pacifico. What would you say are the differences and similarities when you teach there versus when you teach in the United States? Much of the repertoire is similar. People are very interested in 19th century and Baroque repertoire. Uh, they also, of course, play music from Ecuador. Uh, so much of the repertoire is similar. Some of the some of the teaching methods are similar. One of the biggest differences, I was thinking about this question, is that, to the best of my knowledge, they don't have the school music programs we have in the USA. I don't know about the school music programs in Canada. So in the USA, most schools are fortunate to have band programs, some more fortunate to eat. Um, to also have orchestra and then choir. So students can start on lessons and they're also often provided with instruments with which they can start to play. But in Ecuador, I, it, if someone sees this and I'm incorrect, please let me know. In Ecuador, I don't think they have the school music program. So students have to study privately. It's very difficult for them to find instruments. There's no flute shop in Ecuador. So People often have to go to the USA or Europe to buy a flute. Uh, it's you know, just selected. And there are a couple of people who repair flutes, but not many. So oh. it's hard to get instruments fixed. So one of the big differences is that they, uh, the, the flute teachers are really starting them from scratch without the benefit of had it, having had music in their schools. Uh, there are local conservatories and national conservatory in Quito um, and music schools. But those are in addition to an outside of their uh, primary education. And so for that project in Ecuador, what are you hoping for the future for, for the project? I think I, like others, really hope we can support our colleagues there. That's one of the most important things we can do. And it, I think sometimes they also feel isolated even though there are many musicians around. So when we come, we help to bring in, we help them to know that we support what they do and we admire it. I think, again, some of the challenges for them are financial because they don't have the foundations, the nonprofit foundations we have in the USA. They don't have the big flute companies that support, partially support the National Flute Association here. Um, so I think one thing I'd love to see is some way for them to get more um, financial support to help pay their expenses. Uh, and there are, if I ever bought a lottery ticket, which I haven't, and won a billion dollars, I would love to start an international foundation to support music. The only one I know of really is the Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation, which supports projects in Latin America and also scholarships for students to study here. Uh, uh, some of my students have had those grants. Um, and that's a one of my, and one of my former students is the program director there. Um, but, Uh, Nanette Phyllis. So I would love to see in the future uh, some way, and I don't know what it is because I don't know how this really works in those countries, of finding um, more support for the people who are putting on the festivals. 
they really um, do a wonderful job of finding the money to, again, pay the expenses of um, hosting us there. And we don't have fancy hosting, but, uh, and making us feel very welcome. It's, they don't have, I don't think the big foundations like the Ford Foundation or the, the Gates Foundation really support these kind of programs. Perhaps they do. Um, but it would be wonderful if those organizations might support these grassroots music programs. And in Brazil, there have been big, big music and social projects too. Um, but that's what I'd like to see for the future. And also uh, being able to travel to more cities within the country because it's so hard for some, some of the students are in school, hard for them to travel. And there aren't, in Ecuador, there aren't many flights or airlines internally. So again, it might mean six or eight hours driving over the mountains or taking a bus to get to, get to a festival. Um, I think I think with the challenges that the, these countries again are facing with economics and other other issues, it's hard for sometimes for people to think that it's of supporting a small music project or small music music program. But um, that's what I'd love to see in the future, uh, and. It, it's really, it's not my project, it's us. I think one way what we can do is to, again, help our colleagues in other countries with their projects, rather than going in and imposing something external, let's support what's going on in those countries with what we can. What we yeah, can I like do. that, I like that a lot. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, it does. And and I think it's very interesting, this idea that you are there to support. And uh, yeah. And yeah, I think you're right with maybe sometimes we could see music as not as important as other issues. But I guess when you bring something like music, uh, you also bring everything up, you know, it's not gonna do any wrong in the world to have more music, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> hey everybody, so yeah, that was a pretty nice interview. And um, if you want to um, see more of this interview, we have a full extended interview, about 15, 20 more minutes of, of uh, interview with the with uh, Wendy Rolf on patreon.com slash the flu channel there you can watch for watch it for free our interviews are there set there for uh, you to watch uh, for free and also uh, two additional interviews that Wendy conducted with um, some of the organizers at um, in Ecuador so that was pretty cool it's always interesting to see people traveling and doing um, you know volunteering and going out there and doing stuff like that in different parts of the world where you know, there's so many people. We have so many people in South America that watch our show and, um, you know, and other places, too, that we, n we never thought people would watch. And so, like, you know, it's obvious to see that people are wanting to learn have people and learn the flute yeah. everywhere, you know, with uh, not just us, but with others like Wendy and, and other musicians like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so I think it's uh, it's beautiful to see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That totally. The flute is... Uh, and there are flutes everywhere. Like there, there's the flute uh, that we play, but there are also yes. flutes everywhere, and a lot of people play those flutes too. Oh, it's true. And um, oh yeah, in the extended interview, uh, sh you guys talk a lot about a couple of a couple of South American uh, or Latin instruments. Yeah, uh, it's pretty interesting. Wendy plays a couple of them. And oh yeah. And um, yeah, and it, it's a beautiful instrument, and it's good to go out and help people. Who uh, want to uh, learn it yeah. and it's want to have better yeah. instruments too oh and yeah, all that totally. stuff. Yeah. And it's not just uh, teenagers or kids and stuff like that. Adults too. Everybody can learn at any time, you know. Uh, even uh, Wendy, she, like you said, she's learning new instruments from those new flute instruments from 
mm-hmm. those areas uh, even now you know it's uh, all about being curious and you know being curious yeah. musically and creatively and it's it's quite wonderful so yeah and it was a beautiful experience too in boston totally at Berkeley. We, what so a great time also like i encourage anyone who would be interested in having me um give a little master class or concert or both or participate in something with their flute club or their flute uh, association or absolutely to just uh, reach out because it's uh, always very interesting experience for for us to uh, go and meet people and uh, teach and yeah yeah it's it absolutely yeah. very very cool experience and I wish to uh, do it more so for sure don't be shy <laughs> yeah for sure and also yeah it's and uh, it's the uh, one element like we've been always discussing since we've had the channel is the um, The last element is actually being with people that want to uh, or know about us and want to know more about us in person. You know, it's a very fabulous uh, feeling. Uh, We bridge uh, uh, the gap between, you know, online and real life. And it's just uh, we meet a lot of beautiful people and a lot of uh, passionate people about uh, music and about life in general. And so, yeah, it's uh, we encourage you to reach out, you know, and and we're we'll uh, be sure to reach out back. So, yeah, Um, let's do some questions. Let's get back to the regular schedule of things. Um, so if you have any questions and if you're watching this live in the, um, on YouTube right now, be sure to leave a comment in the or a question in uh, the chat on the right of the video. Um, Phoenix Pickle or Piccolo Phoenix. What's wrong with me today? <laughs> I'm inverting my words. Piccolo Phoenix. Do you have any recommendations on professional level flutes on a budget and what things to look for in a professional level flute? You want to answer that? I can answer a little bit, and then you can you can you can fire away as well. So yeah, you know, a budget. You know, first, uh, what is your budget? You know, what is your budget budget? <laughs> or you know, what is that? If it's a thousand dollars U.S., you have a certain you know threshold, and usually those are not professional instruments. But once you get past maybe twenty seven hundred, maybe three thousand, you still can get good mid level flutes. That's a whole different market that have great flutes as well. There's like the mid-level or mid, mid-price mid range or middle, um, mid-professional rather, and then professional in a w- Yeah, in a like way. you would call that maybe an intermediate Intermediate, level? yeah. Or yeah, there's different words for it for sure. Exactly. And so set that budget first, but like things to look for is like but you I want c- to have at least the whole body. Sorry, I want to yeah. ask a question. Let's say you, um, you want to... A professional flute. What's the minimum budget for that? Would you say? No, I, cu- I couldn't say that. You know, like 8, really anything. Or like I said, the mid range for m- for intermediate, two thousand seven hundred, three thousand is where that is, and then assumingly after three thousand is professional. You know, like really, like yeah. to find a base level um, professional so model. But like you have to look for things that. But the things to look for really are mm-hmm. the elements in the flute, right? So you want to have a flute basic professional flutes have all you know st- sterling silver or britannia silver uh not sterling silver uh, I remember, yeah it's maybe sterling silver it's just a high-end the number of like 0. 0.992 99 there's so many numbers and different types of things it's like going to a a car dealership sometimes you know and uh you want to make sure that's at least all silver uh basic and if you want like special things like gold body instead of or aramite body or any of those types of things those are going to be assumingly way more expensive like ten thousand and up range sometimes you know and even higher and higher so like look for like you know you want to have uh, right now there's not many inline uh, g's which is like all the keys in line in the main middle part of the flute um that doesn't really exist now. It's sort of an extended or uh, an additional fee now. It used to actually be the opposite. It used to have a lot of inlines, and then now offset, bit offset has become the norm and usually is built into the price and not an uh, add-on, uh, add-on feature. Hmm. So if you want that for sake of comfort, you'll have to ask them to to get a flute with that inline thing. So you, what you really kind of want to look for is like um, uh, E-facilitator or e um high e um splitty splitty that's right splitty and then um you want to have a, make sure you have a b foot it's it's not imperative it's not like it's uh, needed but most flutes now all have a b foot at the foot joint which is an extended and an, another key and um what else do you need to look for really you want to have make sure you have a good uh that the head joint itself is um you know 
professionally cut. I know Yamaha has like four or five different cuts. The uh, and I know other brands might have similar types of features, like a different head joint for the body. They can interchange before you try it. That's mainly probably with just Yamaha, but like Haynes and Powell and all those other flutes, they all have different types of head joints and no head joint is alike a lot of the time in the professional world. So you want to kind of make sure that uh, those elements are all there. Um, that's really, those. that's baseline, like baseline, baseline, splitty, uh, but that usually comes with uh, offset G and that type of thing. Um, then you have extended things. If you want a real true professional flute, you want maybe you want to find something that has a C-sharp trill because some people like having that. Those are all extended features they can ask for or sometimes might be lucky and it's already built into the flute that you're trying. So those are kind of the elements you need to look for, at least silver, all silver, like the whole silver body. Uh, silver keys, if they don't have silver keys, sometimes they just do, they, they, they try to lessen the price sometimes with professional or low professional and make the keys not silver. But if you have all silver, all silver, usually it's good to have all of that like that. So that's it really. Um, can't really think of anything else that's imperative in that. Um, Some flutes also have else? the little roller for the pinky, yep, I guess. Yeah, you can have those uh, rollers for the, for the right hand. Um, yeah, most professional flutes now do have rollers, which is great. I would probably encourage probably to have that because it, it does help and you don't always grease up your nose and go back and forth and but it's not like a perfect thing a roller on a it's not perfect right like most of those things like it's uh yeah, i don't have yeah i have a pretty basic professional flute yeah exactly it's so fine i think yeah, totally. but like yeah of course if you get something uh, more upscale it's going to be even easier to do some things like the totally the c-sharp trill the key and yeah, all, those, all those, things. those types of things yeah yeah that's a but that's cool also, if you can yeah. afford it but yeah but there are budget level professionals there are you know starting tier so many starting tier in every brand yamaha the uh powell Dizau. uh Dizau, um burkhart you know all those types of flutes if you're in the u.s you're gonna have the biggest selection of that stuff so it's always wise to um look at the base level of that of each professional model. and it's also okay when you go to a store to ask them oh what is your lowest level professional you know mm -hmm. they, they want to sell so and they want to help you so be sure to ask for that and then see and then do research and usually there's practice rooms in music stop so you can sit there and practice a little bit on these flutes and try them out or there's also i'm sure there's probably lenders or like you know um trying uh to try out at music shops as well like do a trial mm-hmm and where I you can always uh, check that out it's good too to if you go and try flutes mm -hmm. maybe bring someone with you so that you have an external ear oh, it's that's good great. To, to be like you try them without saying what it is and which one sounds better because at the end you yeah y sometimes you're hesitating between yeah. two head joints or whatever and yeah and yeah it's, it would be great if you have another musician there with you but you could bring anybody because you want to have an extent another ear you know and any mm -hmm. anything besides uh, yourself will be helpful i'm sure to a certain degree so yeah, yeah um hopefully that answers your question if you have a if you want to extend on that question write it down in the comments here and we'll try to elaborate on that later but uh yeah what else do we got here we have um oh there's a lot of people in the comments here this is great pedro enrique baptista de Oliveira. sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name uh, hi, I'm Pedro from Brazil and a flute student. Have you played the music Tico Tico no Fuba? It is a type of music uh, called uh, Chorino. Chorino. Sorry if I'm Chorino mispronouncing. Chorino or Chorino? Chorino. Oh, I, I don't know. know. Mm. I've heard about that. So, yeah, so have I. I've heard of but that I style. But I didn't I heard play it. it. Yeah, I've, but we'll, we should look into it. Yeah, I mean, that be would be fun. interesting. You know, like, again, what's so fabulous about what Wendy did is go to these places and, you know, experience the music from there, which is so like, not just the music from there historically, the music there culturally right now as mm -hmm. well. It's, it's not the same as in America or in Canada. There's some similarities like she was mentioning, but. No, but there's uh, also like music yeah. that's uh, based on of the heritage, uh, um, uh, folkloric music yeah, or like for sure. evolved from that or yeah, it's yeah. super interesting. Yeah, so that's uh, what's so great about that. So yeah, we'll have to check out what the that music that the, they just mentioned. Pedro will we'll look into and listen yeah, to a little bit. Yeah, because I've like heard about it lot. before. It, it's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Saludos, Saludos. a todos. <laughs> Desde, oh, Guia Kiel Ecuador. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. That's, yeah. uh, that's a cool thing. I wonder if uh, you heard about the festival that... Um, oh, that is right there. Festival de Flautas Perlo de Pacifico. Oh, they're in the, they're in the chat. Nice. That's cool. Saludos a todos. Wendy in the Flute Channel. This day, uh, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you know, like, it was so cool hearing the stories from her. And um, it really paints a picture about how passionate the people are there about uh, music. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 and the students and the teachers and that whole area. Like, you know, everybody's just trying to, especially in South America, trying to get out of those situations that they're in money-wise and all those types of things and bringing music and bringing art and culture really kind of helps bring mm. i think music was already them. there forever because music oh. is in every culture no absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like, not what i mean i meant uh, yeah. more like um just saying like what's great is that that's uh yeah you're yeah, right yeah. exactly yeah yeah but yeah it, it's fun to see that the flute is thriving everywhere and that uh we're trying to be a worldwide community, I guess, you know, helping each other out to uh, make our instrument thrive and live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like what else is, uh, if you guys have any more questions or anything like that about what we do or anything like that, leave that in the comments. But I just wanted to say like um, some of the things we've been doing in the past couple of months is um, we've now – for Patreon and also just for YouTube in general, we've kind of moved our a lot of our content there for people to have more of a less commercial free experience. I just wanted to kind of elaborate on that and to go there and and uh, help us out in that regard over on Patreon because we just find that a lot of people over the past couple of months have had enough time to read some people's emails and comments about how kind of the commercial experience is a bit rough now on YouTube and it's like sometimes very very disruptive in their learning when they're watching one of our videos so be sure if you can you know go to patreon.com slash the flute channel and uh, you can pay there to have our whole entire archive and even uh, videos in advance up to a month or even more of what we put on youtube so you know it's a nice community there we're trying to you know uh, push uh, the learning experience to be a bit more smoother for people and less disruptive because now more and more we feel uh, that uh, commercials especially on youtube and stuff are kind of disruptive on the learning experience so be sure to go there and also check out those interviews um that we just did right now and everything that's free but the extended archive and stuff like that of all of our stuff it's five dollars a month and if you can't uh, do that you can also just tip us two dollars a month and you get uh, some uh, some of those features as well so yeah yeah because like yeah some people might want to have the commercial free and also help us out. So yeah. that's, a, that's a cool thing yeah, that we, have uh, we can offer. Exactly. <laughs> and we have a lot of other things planned, hopefully, to add to the experience there. And as well as here on YouTube to a, to a degree as well. So, yeah. What else do we got here? Limira, SP Brazil. The con- Oh, okay. I think I read that already. But the content is very good, especially coming from a super professional person. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we've been doing this for quite a long time. We've been doing it since 2000, late 2014, 2015. And... We want to do more, and uh, we try to um, bring that uh, to you as uh, easily as possible. And we're excited with some of the new content we're going to have. And also, the album is coming out uh, very soon. Am- Emily is going to be doing a uh, the 12 Fantasias of uh, Telemann, and that's going to be uh, a whole entire release uh, this month. Hopefully, maybe at the end of November sometime. Uh, we have a tentative date, but we're uh, still working it out and getting it all done. But what's so exciting about it is that... Uh, it's going to be an album and also the sheet music with your own um, uh, ornamentations and your own thoughts and stuff like that. It's really a whole experience uh, product, really. You know, album plus sheet music plus uh, other little things. And we're really excited about that. It's been about over a year in uh, of work. Yeah. And we're uh, excited to bring that out to you to, uh, to enjoy. Yeah, because I wanted to record them, but then I also realized that some students, um, when you give them the earth text, which is the the version with no articulation, mm-hmm. no dynamics, nothing, they were a bit confused. Even if I said you can choose your articulations and add them, or when right. you do a repeat, you can add ornaments. So I thought I'll make my own version. This way, people can play my ornaments, or it can inspire them exactly to do their own, but kind of reverse engineer from where. 
how I did it mm-hmm. and be like, okay, now I'm going to do my own, but I'm going to, you know, like mm-hmm. I said, reverse engineer from my my uh, edition that exactly. I'm doing. Yeah. So I think that's a cool thing. Oh, it's excellent. It's going to be, be a great uh, useful for people and uh, and fun for us to, to do because oh, I yeah. had fun learning all of them and mm-hmm. recording them mm-hmm. and they're gorgeous, the uh, Telemann Fantasies. Yeah. And it's going to be yeah. a very good album and you're gonna, everyone's going to... I hope really enjoy it. So yeah, um, I think there was just a w- one or two other little things, and that's um, oh yeah. And if you have questions yeah. about anything flute related, it yeah. can also be about any technical aspect of uh, p- flute playing or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, you can leave it uh, now or for our next podcast. Exactly, and so like, um, and also just a heads up that there also there'll be uh, a new video coming out on the channel. Uh, on November 10th, I think. It's going to be about uh, Tafano and Gobert. You're going to do a whole series about Tafano and Gobert. Uh, 17 big daily exercises, or 7? I don't know how many, I forget. It's 17. Yeah, uh, 17 uh, daily exercises. You're going to do the first one, and then th- that's going to be a whole series about how you kind of approach each one of those numbers, and it's quite amazing. I think I, I looked through it and uh, edited a couple, or edited the... Um, and been editing those, and just, it's uh, it's quite amazing, a great resource, because I th- like you were saying, it's a... Uh, like you were saying about the Telemann with Urtex, it's sort of the same thing with the, the Tafno Gobert. You just get the book sometimes, and then you hear <laughs> about it all the time, but you never had a teacher, but you hear about it through other people, and then you have the book, and you're like, what do I do? You know? Yeah, if... Uh, so that's I kind of exciting. explain how to practice it. Oh, you do it. explain it, for sure. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. and how it's uh, how it's built, so that if you understand the, the, um, the sequence, you know, exactly. it's, uh, exactly. it's exactly. a bit easier to learn, and yeah. how to learn it, uh, in a effective way, I guess. Totally. So yeah, I think that's cool. We'll do it with all of them. Yeah. So again, thanks everybody. I think this will be the the uh, culmination of the show, but we're going to be back in the last Sunday of December, um, and we'll let you know about that in the on the YouTube channel and our socials. Also, uh, just be sure to. Well, I can't remember what else it was there going to be. Um, oh, also, just be sure to check out the links in the description. I'm going to be updating them right after the show. Uh, with all the links to all the extended interviews uh, with Wendy and Wendy interviewing uh, the volu- the the organizers over in Ecuador as well. So uh, just be a little patient about that in about five ten minutes, and then you can come and see th- all those in the description box below uh, this video, and also in the um, uh, podcast uh, description as well when that comes out tomorrow. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining in. It's been very fun. It was great to uh, hear Wendy again and talk to her, and hopefully we'll be uh, talking to her again in the future. And I think that's about it, huh? Yeah. Also, go to our store. Go to musigy.com and find our method. Emily has both her beginner and intermediate method. Uh, It's going to be coming up to that time of the season, and we won't be able to talk about it until uh, after Christmas, but... Uh, it's a great gift for budding flutists or you know people who want to learn. If you're hesitant on the the program, we've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sales and great uh, communication with the uh, and reviews with people about that. So be sure to go check out that the beginner yeah. uh, method and the intermediate method. It's an all in one. Yeah, you don't have to buy other books because everything's in it. The yeah. rhythm and sight reading Some and sound exercises yeah. and technique it's yeah. all in there all so in, there. in video you have video you t- do talking the pdf you also have playback tracks and practice tracks um we've been very very happy with that product and very very happy that we've been making a difference for a lot of people and it's very good for the budget friendly person but it's still a very high level of instruction and uh we really really appreciate it if you want to do that and go to musigy.com m-u-s-o-g-y.com all that will be uh, linked in the description. So, yeah, thanks, Emily, so much for being here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. <laughs>